<laughs> right, so uh, well, thanks for everyone coming. There may be a few people that will join uh, shortly. It has taken um, a little bit more longer to click through on the link, so apologies for that. So um, we've got Andy Cowling, the marketing manager of the UK. We've got Ken Wright, an account manager for the UK. And we have Gavin Hubbard, a technical consultant for EMEA, uh, doing this presentation for us. So I'm going to hand you over to Andy and... Um, if we could, if there is any questions you, you, you need to ask, um, uh, we can do that at the end. But if you could raise your hand um, and leave it raised, and then I'll make a note of who has a question and on what slide, and we can address that at the end. So uh, anyway, over to you, Andy. Thanks. Lovely. Thank you, Martin. Hi, everyone. So um, I think most of you probably know me. I'm, I'm Andy Cowling. I am... Um, General Marketing Manager at PFU EMEA. Thanks for um, for joining North Amber's uh, Techie Tuesday. It's uh, fairly new in the offering, so it's uh, good to get involved early on and hopefully um, help them make this a success. Um, the agenda that we've got today probably doesn't fit the bill massively well around Techie. It's probably a little bit more tech, but what we wanted you to do is to, just to give you a little bit of a run through the product ranges, um, perhaps looking at what's new, perhaps looking at what some of the opportunities are and what's driving the market around SCAN. And um, we're going to have some techie sections, naturally looking at uh, some of our latest products and particularly around the PaveStream offering. What I would say is that we're going to speed through this because there's a lot of slides, but we have done webinars on all these topics in the past. So if anyone wants to take a deeper dive into um, the new SP series or the 800R, then those webinars are available on our brand page on North Amber's site. So please take a look or, of course, come and speak to us or speak to your, your partner manager at North Amber, Ken or whoever. So um, just wanted to talk, as I say, scan snap, a little bit about SP, FI scanners moving into PaveStream, and then a final couple of slides on our channel platforms. Remote working, that seems to be the... Um, the buzzword, the topic of the moment, um, certainly since lockdown back in March, it's formed the basis of a lot of conversations that, that we've been having, not just with you, our, our reseller community, but also taking that message to end user around how can we help companies to, I guess, maintain their remote working policy, but also drive that as more people have, have needed to uh, work from home. So these stats were pre COVID pre lockdown, and of course, we expect these to rise exponentially. So, 61% of global companies allow their staff to have some sort of remote working policy. And as I say, it'll be very interesting to see how that shifts in the next few months. Even Fujitsu in Japan have, have announced that they're going to allow 80,000 staff to start working remotely from home. 70% um, of people worldwide work remotely at least once per week. And we've just got a slide here that looks at what do we or do people think are the biggest advantages of flexible working. I'm sure that Martin can say it's about taking his dog for a walk and Alex can say it's about spending time with his newborn. But we, we've all the last few months seen the benefits certainly of um, being able to work from home and having that flexibility. So we just broke this down by age group and had a look at really what they thought was the, the some of the critical choices or the critical reasons around flexible working. And what we're trying to do is work this up into content that we could um, work with you on to push that out to your user base. So let's have a chat around that and see how we can keep that remote working message going to, to your customer base as well. But it's quite interesting to see how as you get older, so you get more concerned about how much money you're spending on travel. And as the younger you are, the more you're interested in, in exercising and doing your hobbies. Um, and avoiding the stress of life. Without dwelling too much on um, COVID and the, the, the challenging circumstances, that, that has changed things forever, and um, not just from an employer's perspective, but also employees reassessing their working environment, um, how they engage with the office, uh, and how they, they manage their day-to-day -day life. So it's becoming obviously more and more popular and the question is really, um, were businesses prepared for the first spike and are they prepared as we move um, into uncertain times as we get towards winter, perhaps, where we might see a second spike? So a lot of organisations maybe um, have just about survived. They've had departments that have 
barely functions um, and Ken will talk a little bit about that later when it comes to areas like HR so there are, are things that we can talk to organizations about to help improve their processes um, to hopefully ready them for uh, potential later spikes some of the barriers to remote working that we've listed out here um, employee isolation is probably a big one here and the mental well-being of staff that are at home um, but also how easy is it for people to access paperwork they might necessarily have stored in the office in um, storage rooms how, how are they accessing that information how are they getting hold of that paperwork productivity might be impacted security of those documents might be impacted as well if they're popping into the office to grab a box bringing those home um, there's them prone to be uh, stolen or lost And you all know, and, and North Amber are very much involved in what do um, employees need to provide to facilitate remote working. They've been heavily involved in pushing out that remote working message. And of course, our part here at PFU Fujitsu is the, the facility around scanning to enable people to move away from their paper-based processes to their digital ones. Paper is an expensive overhead and I think this will be one of the big changes that we'll see moving away from very much paper-based processes and it's not just the direct costs that you might associate with printer equipment or the cost of paper but also some of those are indirect costs of paper when it comes to things like um, the rental of property um, it might be um, the cost of staff time to actually fulfill um, envelopes and post those out so you might be looking at postage costs um, how easy is it to retrieve records um, a lot of talk around HR at the minute and how quickly can they find records that they need to then fulfill um, subject access requests for example and of course talking about subject access requests that's that's a very small part of GDPR um, that we all know and love but we're also talking about things like the right to be forgotten um, we, we have a lot of people that have been made furloughed, unfortunately, um, and of course they're interested to know why. Why was I chosen ahead of someone else? Am I going to be made redundant? What does that company hold on me? Um, can I ask them to delete everything they hold on me? So GDPR is all around how can we be compliant? And of course, paper-based information makes that very, very difficult. So something that a lot of companies need to think about. I've seen the list of people on the call. You're all very familiar with, with our scan range and products but a couple of slides just to talk about the benefits of scanning and, and how essentially our scan snap range is the smarter way to work it's all about improving efficiencies it's all around taking content from a document and making that useful um, making that something that you can push into downstream processes we can help reduce costs um, it's not just in terms of the physical storage but staff time freeing up that staff time to be spent on doing something that's that's more beneficial to the company and it's about improving the usage of data I suppose a similar slide here that's looking at, at those benefits of moving from paper to digital um, probably some of these to, to look at here is the retention of records and through scanning applying retention policies you know how long to keep documents for companies are all, all for the green message and all around saving money and saving time an interesting slide here just looking at some of the opportunities around um, scanning and, and i suppose some conversations to take to your customer bases um, that it's not necessarily just about the message that we can take to home workers through an employer but also a lot of employees are now driving um, the demand for technology because they have realized that they can't carry on working as they were it was great for the first month being perched on your bed um, with a laptop on on your knees but now people are realizing that they need to, to kit themselves out they need a desk they need um, a monitor they, they need everything that they have to function and they're realizing that this isn't going away they've perhaps given up on their company um, wanting to uh, to supply this that they're going to go and purchase it themselves but of course we also have some some information around families how can everyone in a family function at home when you've got kids you've got um, partners and so on um, and perhaps specific verticals 
um, how can we help you to take a message to education around homeschooling? Um, my, my daughter, she's starting a new school in September and she's recently been told that it's going to be a bring your own device policy. So everyone at her new school is going to have to bring their own device um, because they don't want them, I suppose, touching everything else that's in the school. So great opportunity there for um, kitting out kids with every piece of tech that they need to function at school as, as well as at home. Um, the other interesting one is, is, of course, how companies are going to return to office life um, and perhaps a more valid argument for our higher end products. So quick overview of ScanSnap. Um, it's essentially, I've said already, the smarter way to work. That's the tagline of ScanSnap. But it's all around making life intuitive. It's all around making um, things more efficient, more productive. So scan a document um, all the way from business card right up to A3 documents. The, very much around pressing the button, save that document and off it goes. Um, there's no need for sort of complex involvement both pre during and post the scan process so it's about how can we help users intuitively convert documents from paper to digital and then distribute those seamlessly it's the world's favorite scanner we've now sold over 5 million scan snaps globally and it's very much powered by a productivity productivity enhancing software suite so i've got a slide on that shortly Oh, it's here. Um, and I, I guess some of the, the key takeouts of the software that we provide with ScanSnap is all around, again, making data useful. So it's about how can we extract data and, and push those into other applications that then make them more useful. So we, we bundle Abbey Fine Reader, for example, and that allows you to convert documents to Word, Excel, PowerPoint. We have ScanSnap Receipt that allows you to take data from receipts and push those out to um, like a CSV file, for example. So there's some good messaging around how can we help accountants perhaps manage their clients' data better because they, they no longer want that physical interaction. And there's maybe even an argument to be had for getting accountants to talk to their end users around digitizing in the first place. Um, ScanSnap Cloud, we, we have a slide shortly. Um, and then we also have the ability through um, what's Nuance Power PDF, but we'll should it become Kofax Power PDF to create searchable and editable PDF and PDFA files. Here's the slide on ScanSnap Cloud. Um, so this comes with the iX100 and iX1500, and that takes another step away from the scan process because this allows people to um, scan their documents and for ScanSnap to realize what's been scanned and then route that accordingly to a preset profile. So. Um, a good example here is if people set it up to, to scan a receipt, once it sees that receipt, you can say to it, please send that to Expensify, please send that to um, Concur. If it sees a document, you might tell it to send that straight to Evernote or Dropbox or Google Drive. It's, it's, it's a way of just intuitively um, disseminating information um, without the needs for, um, I suppose, manual intervention. And, and that, would, that could be great if for people on the move, again, people who might be at home, they just want to scan something straight to the clouds that everyone can then access um, without the need for further steps. It's platform agnostic, so um, works across all devices, Windows, Mac, um, smart devices. Again, I'm sure you're all very well aware of the family, but these are the five products that sit in the range at the moment. And this slide just shows really a breakdown as to, to where they typically sit. So we have mobile devices, um, very much obviously aimed towards mobile workers, remote workers. But we also have some verticalized opportunities, perhaps within healthcare uh, for community workers and people that just might need to scan documents on the move, couriers, and send those straight to um, a cloud service. We have the S1300i, which sits, um, I guess, between the two. It it's, can be USB powered. Um, and sorry to mention, the RX100 is battery powered. So the S1300i can be USB powered. It can be powered by um, an AC adapter. And where the difference is here, we can now scan multiple pages. RX1500 can now scan up to 50 pages um, through the ADF. And the SV600 is an overhead device, so great for scanning um, items with a depth of 3D. So we sell a lot of these into schools where children um, or where they were digitizing everything they were doing during the day and then sharing those with teachers 
um, parents and so on. But I won't dwell too much on these. We, we've got um, lots of information on all the scan steps and we can help you place uh, place these to your customers. The RX1500 very quickly. Um, this is our, our latest scan snap, um, very much around, again, an intuitive working. You can throw documents through it. It will automatically take out any skew. It will automatically crop documents to that exact size. It will rotate, remove blank pages and so on. So there's no need to pre-sort. Throw documents through. It will sort of those for you, display that best image first time. And then it's up to you. What do you want to do with that document? The beauty with the RX1500 is that um, we now have a touch screen, so you can set up to 30 profiles, and that allows the user to say, right, um, I'm going to put a scan to email button, or I'm going to put a scan to um, Excel button, push the document through, press scan, and then that will automatically do what you've told it to do. So it's not in the past with ScanSnap where you scan and then it says what you want to do with that document, it's turning that around. Um, 30 different profiles, as I say, four users can use this, so lots of people can have different um, profile buttons on this. Mention the multiple users, um, people can set up their own buttons, so I preempted this slide. And we also have a new piece of software here called ScanSnap Home, um, so this is all about easy um, organization. Um, sharing storage of your of your documents do it all from your desktop tag those documents um, and then manage those in a, in a far more efficient way and it adapts to you it, it understands how you're using it and adapts accordingly so suggesting file names for images so it's really all about ai and how can we help the user to have that more of a of a i suppose a customer journey and a design that works, it, it's compact, um, it's ready to go when you open. Um, so uh, as I say, iX1500, very much our flagship model of the ScanSnap range. Um, if there are any other any opportunities to perhaps look at upgrades to existing install bases of iX500, S1500, S500, however far back you wanna go, then this is a great model. We've got some very good content around. Um, how can this help? On that note, um, I'm going to hand over to, to Ken Wright, who's our sales and partner manager, who's going to talk to you a little bit about RSP and, and FI series scanners. Yeah, thanks, uh, Andy. Um, Ken, are you presenting your own slides, yeah? No, I was going to run through um, the slides or drive the slides from my side. Okay, no problems at all. Okay, well, over to you then, Ken. Have you muted him, Martin? No, he should be fine. I think he muted himself. Yeah, I'm unmuted now. Can you hear me, Martin? Oh, okay. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah, so guys, I thought I'd just um, really run through um, just a couple of our um, scanners today. Uh, obviously, we've got the new SP units, and then there's also um, a little bit more focus on the 800R, which um, we launched some time back, but uh, I think we could, we'd all agree we could do with seeing a few more sales on. Um, so yeah, first off, just regarding some of the different scanner scanning opportunities, we've got um, HR on this slide, um, and all the different facets around that. Um, nominally, employee records and expense claims would, um, would jump out at me there. Um, and you've got employment applications as well. Um, next slide, Andy. Yeah, accounts payable, um, again, another um, great opportunity for us um, and definitely where we see um, people being introduced to scanning with, with uh, the SP series. Next slide, Andy. And then also SMEs, um, I won't run into this too much. There's a, there's a slide on some um, the SME opportunity later on. We'll move on. So introducing the uh, second series um, of SP. Uh, these are for organizations that have paper-based workflows, uh, people who are maybe being introduced to document scanning. 
um, and that you know the whole range is for for people across the board, really, so from small businesses right up to large corporations. Next slide, don't we? So the SME opportunity, uh, the way we define it in the UK is, for, is companies with fewer than 250 employees, an annual turnover of less than 40 million, and a balance sheet of less than 34 million pounds. 99% of all private sector businesses in the UK are classed as SMEs. 96% are micro businesses with less than 10% staff. Next slide, then. So for the SP, we see it as a compact, economical and effective solution. Uh, very cost efficient. Um, so, you know, we're looking at, it's definitely um, an, an entry level type scanner for, for people looking to um, really work with a workflow. Next slide, Andy. I think I might have already gone on. Okay, so. so the two requirements really are for um, the customers who require regular scanning, so they're in, inputting data into workflows. Similarly, they may just require ad hoc scanning um, this would be for unstructured paper-based information. Uh, obviously, the key driver would be to reduce admin and um, to cut costs. Next slide, then. And as we all know, with those uh, three sectors that we mentioned, with HR, uh, also with accounts payable and SMEs, um, a lot of them are the same, same sorts of drivers, so they'll be traditionally paper-based. Uh, the, you know, we, we've just had an, um, we're going through an office move at the moment and there's a hell of a lot of paper. Anybody who's been anywhere near our office, um, we'll see where as guilty as anybody. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of handbooks, a lot of documents, um, compliance is still a massive driver throughout scan. And then obviously with that bookkeeping and within accounting as well. Next slide, Andy. So paper is still viewed as being a barrier to efficiency gains. And obviously the, the usual disadvantages of paper. So we see that they take up more space and the cost that that involves, uh, the slower of transfer, the slowness of transfer and searching, the lack of security. Uh, and then obviously the buzzwords of digital transformation, it really does blunt that impact. Next slide, Andy. So the same arguments apply regarding um, the dedicated scanner over the uh, traditional MFP. So it's the same messages, so more, more efficiency, um, consistency of the quality of the output, which is physical for OCR, automation, and the better use of space. Next slide, Andy. The benefits of the SP series, we see that you'd be streamlining processes, which would accelerate efficiency, obviously less admin, more productivity. That would help the um, help to support digital transformation across an organization. and would also help amplify organizational intelligence, which uh, we'll probably have some news on that later this week. So what's new in the second generation of SP? Um, obviously, we've got paper stream and capture, which um, Gavin will cover in a short while. Uh, there's LAN support, Mac and Linux support, which is coming soon, and also um, the new USB 3.2 for faster transfer. Um, obviously, now with the SPs, we've got the train um, and ISIS compatibility, and um, Stream capture. Next slide. Um. As same messaging, really. So it's um, ease of use, um, easy one push operation. That's a profile driven user interface. Uh, so, and there's a quick scan button, um, which again helps um, ease of use. Uh, easy to install by all accounts, it's wizard-based, step-by-step -step setup, so very easy to install for customers. And then the paper stream IPNet is enabling LAN connectivity, 
can I certainly scan it from any computer on the network? Next slide, maybe. The main things to focus on with SP really, um, it's digitization into workflows. It's really an introduction for, for people who are looking to, to be scanning more, um, to simplify their, their own workflows and to automate their processes as much as possible. Next slide on. And then I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the product lineup. Andy's covered off the, uh, the scan snaps. Um, we've got the SV600 still in the range, uh, as I say, the, uh, the SPs, uh, scanner, and then here's the FI range, which is still um, very much uh, where we're looking to, to carry on with. Um, yeah, so now I think we'll move on to the 800R. The opportunity with that. And again, it's um, with the 800, I'm sure you guys had the message on launch. Um, we're looking for a lot of places with um, sort of front of house operations. Um, customers will want to keep the customers' documents as secure as possible and to enhance the customer experience wherever possible. Next slide, Andy. Okay. Sure. You see the front, of, front desk process being interrupted in a number of ways um, and this document scanner would help people. Sorry, Sorry yeah. my screen seems to have died there. Uh, I'm just going to launch it back up again. Yeah. For some reason, my PowerPoint throw is completely. Let me just open this up. How's that? Are we back again? Yeah, we're up and running again now. Thanks, Andy. Good. So, right, everyone. Right. So, yeah. Next slide, isn't it? How's that? Yeah, that's great. Good. So the 800 are the seamless scanning solution specific, specifically designed for the front desk, the scanning passports, ID cards. Um, obviously, the benefits will be saving colleagues, colleagues and customers time and delivering a seamless customer experience. The benefits listed on screen here, so you've got um, faster, customer, faster customer service times, greater productivity, some greater use opportunity for upselling and uh, obviously those buzzwords of compliance and um, higher customer satisfaction would also be important with the ATEM with our next slide please Andy. And I probably should have put the, the benefit on here the obvious one as well in this current time around contactless so it, it's almost a self-service device for for people to scan their own documents into a process rather than perhaps this image here where someone's handing something over so um, that that's probably a, a strong benefit as well Very much so. so i'm sure you guys have seen the uh, e 100 r in in action uh, it's a great design very space saving uh, very usable um, and we call it really a uh, swiss army knife in the uh, in our range of document scanners uh, it's a great paper feeding mechanism very compact, um, most compact design on the market.
And then our latest graphics here showing the automatic stacking technology and how the uh, papers fed in and returned to documents neatly to its original position. In terms of the space saving design, we have um, much less installation space required, even while it's in, in even when the scanner is in use. And that's the uh, paper path there. So um, two scanning paths within the one scanner. And this is um, just again on the paper feeding showing active separation technology. It, it adjusts according to the paper that it's scanning, which helps with uh, prevention of multi feed. Is that um, one come up camera, the, the paper feeding? Yeah, it's just come up now, yeah. And then, yeah, again, this just highlights the uh, skew correction, how it detects documents if they're roughly set and straightens them before scanning. And regarding the speeds, uh, we're up to 40 pages per minute, 80 images through the ADF, which uh, translates into around three and a half seconds per item return. And then we move through towards the um, paper stream IP and paper stream capture, which, um, as I said, I think Gavin will be covering this off. So that's the 800R, um, streamlining, streamlining the checking process, saving time, saving space, reducing cost, and great for the front desk experience. Thanks, Ken. Um, I think that the, the main message from a channel marketing perspective is that we, we have content available for all our range um, where we've tried to really position the scanner alongside an application. So rather than just turning around and saying, here's our range of scanners, take your pick, we've tried to really think about how is the 7160 perfect for scanning patient records. How's the 65F perfect for onboarding students at universities? Um, why is the 800R perfect for, for hotels and hospitality? So we can really help you build up some compelling arguments and compelling messaging that you can take to your customer bases around products. The other thing to mention as well is that we, we have a, a, a demonstration unit scheme where you can buy demo units at a reduced price. And then after 90 days, you're allowed to resell those. Um, we also have evaluation units, so a, a large pool of, of scanners that you can access. So if you want to get an evaluation unit that you can take a look at yourself to upskill your own staff, um, great. Um, once you start going back out visit, visiting customers, then that's that's perfect to take along with you, or even just send it to your customer so that they can trial it for a period of time and see how it sits alongside their application. So please come to us if you'd like to get hold of any of these new products, or indeed any of the range, um, to trial um, and see how how that works. It's the best way, as you guys well know, as as to um, trying the product and seeing how it how it works. Um, so on that note, I'm going to um, let Gavin drive the paper stream presentation. So Martin, you need to work some some magic here. I think I'll stop my sharing. Okay, so uh, you've stopped your sharing, Andy. Now I think um, Gavin, just click that button. You should you should start sharing. Yeah. Hi everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Okay. I've just uh, unmuted myself. So. You can. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm just sharing. Can you see my screen? We can, yes. Thanks. Stream slides, yep. Yep. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name's Gavin Hubbard. I think a lot of you know me already. And I'm just going to walk you through our paper stream offering that comes with um, our FI and, SS, sorry, FI and SP series scan. So with any scan solution, really, there's probably three main parts. That's the scanner hardware the scan application, and then 
something that connects the two, the hardware and the capture application, which is the scanner driver. So for us, for the uh, image cleanup and the capture application, that's PaperStream. And this comes with our FI series and SP series scanners. Um, PaperStream capture, so PaperStream IP is with both. And what's quite important now, PaperStream capture, for SP series is now the, the full version of capture. Uh, the previous generation of SP series it was PaperStream capture light, which did have some limitations. But now you have the full version, which allows you to scan directly to PDF, which we didn't have before. PaperStream IP is what gives all the image cleanup, um, something that we're um, really like really is the fact that uh, we can guarantee pretty much great images every time. And one thing I didn't mention, we have PaperStream NX Manager. This is for our FI7300 NX scanner. So really there's three things for PaperStream. For the IP, what we say we have advantage, which is the guaranteed great image quality. It's simple and intuitive to use, and we can streamline processes. So just to talk about the image quality. Uh, most people these days, probably in business, um, probably will mainly scan in black and white to reduce file size, but storage is becoming cheaper. Uh, so some more people are scanning in color, but we can still actually reduce the file size, even if they're scanning in color. Uh, we can adjust the tone, so it'll reduce the, the difference uh, in the background color. We can reduce any marks on the images, so the, the slide in the center. This is a, a light blue document that has some black bars on it, which may be from a, a copier that is um, the print cartridge is wearing out. But we can remove those lines from the image. And also we have something called edge correction. So if there's folded corners on the page, or there are documents that are stapled together and the staple's been snipped off rather than removed, Every image or page that goes through the image will have a black triangle on it, which is more content or data, which adds to the file size. But we can fill this in with the, the background color of the original page to, again, to reduce the, the file size. But I mentioned about um, most people probably in business will scan in black and white. What's important when you're scanning really is when you, when you go to retrieve or view that document, the content needs to be legible, whether that's just to read the original or for post-scan processing for OCR. With our um, legacy drivers, um, and probably some competitors, we would say that the image cleanup isn't great, and scanning this blue document with the black bars on, you'll get lines through the text and the content on the page. So any OCR is probably not going to be very accurate, so you'll get misread characters. But with PaperStream IP, it's intelligent, it looks at every page that goes through and it will adjust the content based on that image so it will drop out any background speckle, it will fill in characters so you get uh, great accuracy every time. So as well as just using, eliminating the blackout, background color, we can remove watermarks from the image or stamps that are on the image. So on the left hand side is a document that has um, watermark on the page it will remove that so again we have clean characters and for post scan OCR you're going to get that reliability every time so I mentioned about the reduction in file size so uh, PFU in Japan did a comparison with some of our competitors and our file size was um, less than all the others, in some cases quite significantly a lower file size. Moving on to simple and intuitive operation. So this is PaperStream IP, so this is a scanner driver. It comes with SP and FI series, and it's the same whether it's Twain or ISIS. So the, the industry standards for scanning are Twain and ISIS, and whether you're using either depending on what your application requires. The look and feel is exactly the same for the user. We also have two modes. So there's simple mode or simple dialogue, which is mainly aimed at operators or the scanner user. 
So they only have access really to basic settings. So that could be just to switch from simplex to duplex or select a PaperStream IP driver profile from the drop down menu. If you click on the two small blue arrows in the top hand, right hand corner of the user interface, we can switch to normal dialog. And this is probably more aimed at administrators. And this gives you access to all the detailed settings within the driver. So paper size, resolution, color mode, um, orientation, blank page deletion, dropout color, these kind of things. And you can also lock these so users can't change them. You have to enter a password to have access. And you can also lock it so any user will only see either the simple dialogue or the normal dialogue. So it's, it's great to, if you're in a, maybe a scan bureau or a place that does a lot of scanning, you don't want people to change settings, they can be locked down and avoid settings being changed unnecessarily. Something that's quite useful when you're in the normal dialogue interface is a preview button. So what this allows is you can load a document. It's particularly useful if you have a document that is maybe difficult to get a good scan result. You can load the page in the scanner, click preview, the page will be scanned, and then any of the settings you change in the driver will be reflected immediately on the window. So you don't have to change a setting, scan again, the result wasn't quite what you wanted, so you have to change another setting, scan again. You can change all the settings, but only need to scan the page one time, and any changes you can see instantly. Any changes that you make, you can then, if you choose, save these as a driver profile, so that when you want to scan this particular document again, you can easily select from the drop-down menu this particular profile that you created. Moving on to streamlined process. So uh, Ken mentioned about um, FI800R. So something that was introduced to PaperStream with the launch of this product was we can automatically detect the photo side of a, an ID or a driver license, whether the ID or license was scanned face down or face up, it doesn't matter the photo side will always be presented as the, the front side or first image. There's also something we have called assisted scan. So you can see four scanned images here, the third one of which has um, some very dark speckling around the edge. But using assisted scan, we can scan that page and then be presented with nine thumbnail images. And then without needing to rescan, you just click on the, the sample image that's displayed that you think is the, the best quality image. As soon as you click on that, it will change uh, your image and also then load nine more sample uh, thumbnail images. And you can adjust the quality of the, the difference between each thumbnail, there's a slider to um, either get a small jump between image quality or quite a large jump. Once you've selected your the best image, you can either click OK and carry on scanning, or you can also choose to save this as a new PaperStream IP driver profile, so you don't have to scan the page again in the future and then recreate the or change the settings to get the optical image. Something else that uh, we introduced recently, I think with the launch of the FI 7900 and 7800, was auto profile selection. So we can tell PapeStream when it recognizes, if it's, it's a fixed form, we can say, when you see this form, apply this driver profile to it. If it's form B, apply this profile, and it's all done automatically. So you can have many different documents or forms within one batch. And then with one click of scan, all the appropriate settings for that form type will be applied automatically. So again, it frees up operator time, reduces the amount of paper prep required. So this here is a comparison, again in Japan, where they comp um, compared our uh, offering with some of the competitors. Uh, because of the guaranteed image quality, there's less time required to rescan 
uh, maybe find the documents again need to be to be scanned so reduced labor cost and the time per person to rescan everything so moving on to paper stream capture so this is our scan application with fi and sp series scanners so it's a simple to use batch scan application so once you've created the scan profiles all the user needs to do is load the documents and then click on the relevant batch profile so ease of operation when you first install the software uh, without the user or administrator creating any profiles um, automatically there's a profile created called one push scan which is linked to the scan button on the scanner so in the most simple way of using the scanner you could install the software load the documents and just push scan and they will go straight to your my documents folder as well as this we have maybe what uh, I sometimes re refer to as maybe an ad hoc scan so as well as batch scan we can do simple scan mode whereas you launch the application choose your scanner select your scan settings click scan and then the images will be scanned and this has no effect on any of the profiles you created so it's a simple easy to use quick ad hoc scan setting but you also have the simple interface I mentioned batch scan so we can create batch scan profiles so this is really an administrator function so you create the profile you give it a name you choose the icon for your profile you choose your scan settings so this could be uh, one of the profiles we created in PapeStream IP these will be available so rather than have to configure everything again it, if it's a PapeStream IP, IP profile you created previously it's easy to select and then in the most basic way the only other option you need to do is your file formats and where you're saving and naming the files but we can also have, have the option to um, detect metadata whether that's zonal OCR a barcode and we can also separate whether that's a fixed number of pages patch codes barcodes or again so uh, zonal OCR once you've scanned the images are displayed the user can manually um, separate and rearrange the order of the images with the 7000 series scanners we have something called automatic image quality checker so if there is an error on the page maybe a multi-feed it will be highlighted in red um, if PaperStream thinks there's a problem with the image so in the image on the bottom right hand side it's marked in a yellow border it's detected that there's a torn or folded corner on the page so it gives you the opportunity to you, for you to retrieve that document from the stack maybe unfold the corner and scan again so you get a clearer crisp image I mentioned assisted scan earlier from the driver uh, within PaperStream capture once you've scanned um, if you find you need to rescan a page maybe the image quality that's displayed isn't very good we can uh, click on that thumbnail and then from the toolbar at the top select assisted scan which could be assisted add which will add the page or assisted replace it will scan the page and replace that image that's previously scanned and again you're pre uh, presented with the nine thumbnails and you easily select what you think is the best quality image without the need to rescan the physical piece of paper boosting productivity so again we can um, uh, sort and create folders based on content on the page for example a barcode so we can automatically uh, separate a file and name the new file or folder based on that barcode content or zonal OCR if we're scanning passports we have the opportunity um, to automatically detect the contents on that passport so there's a 
machine readable zone. So this could be the passport number, uh, the passport holder, the nationality. It's automatically extracted and it could be added to the file name or exported as an index file or any other kind of metadata. So I mentioned on the, the previous slide the auto sorting. Again, we can do this on our, our barcodes. There's a 2D barcode uh, option for 7160 and below, but the scanners above that will come with the, the 2D barcode option. As well as we have the automatic profile selection, we can do similar with the form type. So again, it will automatically detect this is a, uh, a template that you've created or you scanned the form previously and created this profile. Once PaperStream Capture recognizes this form, it will know exactly where to, to place those images, how to name them and apply any um, settings to those images. Uh, metadata, so we can um, have multiple uh, fields we can set up, whether that's zonal OCR, uh, barcode, things like that we can extract and uh, add to either the file name or set up as an index and export as an index file. So for any existing PaperStream Capture user, we also have the option for PaperStream Capture Pro. So this is an upgrade. So um, this will allow, with PaperStream Capture standard, really it's um, scan and index all on one PC. But PaperStream Capture will also allow you to um, have multiple scan stations. And then maybe you want one QC and index station, or you can have any combination of those. All the images are scanned and sent to what's called the image storage server. So then anyone can access those images, retrieve them for indexing QC. And then just to, to finish off, just a comparison really with what Capture Pro adds. So we also have an import license. So if you have existing files created on a, an MFP or a different scanner, we can import different file formats and then apply any of the functionality to those images that we can through PaperStream Capture. Because the images are stored on the image server, we're able to uh, do after scan correction without the need for that physical piece of paper. And rather than the 20 index fields, we have up to 100 uh, metadata fields available if we're using Capture Pro. And as I mentioned, we can separate out the scan stations and the index and QC. And that is about it from me. Thank you very much. Thanks, okay. Gavin. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Gavin and, and Andy and Ken. That's um, covered quite a lot of ground there, but you know, it's uh, it's useful information. And um, this recording will be on our website. Um, for anyone wanting to uh, look at it, we do have a YouTube channel for North Amber now. Plus, these are hosted, you know, there and also on our website. Um, if there's any questions, I'm just looking at time. We, we're right on the hour. Um, if there's any specific areas that people want more details on, um, obviously, it's quite a friendly uh, gathering here. But if you want to, uh, and you, I think everyone knows the, the guys at PFU, but if you want to pop any um, requests over to myself, my, my email address is uh, 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 MPN, that's M for Mother, P for Papa, N for November, then numerical one at northamber.com. Um, and I can obviously um, get that sorted for you and, and hook you up. Uh, demo units and anything like that can be done directly with Ken or, or, or your account manager or through distribution. You can make the request. But I mean, if do we have any questions? I mean, if, if people want to ask a question now while we've got the guys still here, please um, please let us know. No questions, thanks. Okay. Well, uh, in that case, guys, thank you very much for your time. Um, you'll be notified when the recording goes on the website. And as I said, any 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 questions or follow ups, please come through me. But and uh, I'll call that a close a close of uh, the webinar. Okay.
Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks Martin. Thanks, everyone.